Hello guys and welcome back to a brand new Two Ordinary Guys video and thank you for tuning in obviously to the channel as I always say I am very very grateful for the support you guys give on this channel and we have reached now the record amounts on the channel of subscribers gained for the month we've currently gained 130 subscribers in October which is absolutely amazing and it's kind of gave me the realisation that I do need to stick to a schedule, that I do need to say I'm uploading this day, this day and this day because people, it is starting to work, people are starting to tune back and I think it's starting to work a little bit. So I'm going to give a little introduction to the channel, if you watch every video, like I said thank you, but also sometimes we do gain new viewers. So my name is Kyle Sands, I'm a second year, as you can see from the label, two straps, two stripes, um, I'm a second year student paramedic at the University of Worcester. I'm September cohort, so I start obviously in September, we're currently in October, so we've had four weeks on the road, two weeks, so we had two weeks prior to starting, four weeks on the road, and now we're now back for lectures, so we, we start now back in lectures until the end of Christmas, and then we go back on break for Christmas, come back, have an exam, an exam, an OSCE, and then we go back out on placement, so at the moment, we, our last video was about the elective placement in CCU. I gave like a little summary on how I felt my elective placement went. If you didn't check it out, go and check it out because if you're considering that sort of area and you're interested in maybe, you know, cardiology and obviously as a student paramedic you do need to know quite a lot about um, the cardiovascular system. So definitely go and check it out and it might make you kind of want to go and, and maybe get an elective there or if you're going there, make you more, a little bit more looking forward to it, it might ease a little bit of nerves. So, we're there. We finished CCU placement, then we went back on front line for a week. I've been really, really behind schedule, I'm going to mention that in a moment, and the reasons why I'm behind schedule. But then I went back onto front line, I had three shifts back on the front line. I had two 10-10 shifts, so 10 in the morning till 10 at night. And then I had a night shift, half past six in the, half past six in the morning. No, half past six in the afternoon until half past six in the morning the following day. So, and then obviously I finished, had a day off on the Sunday, and then we're back here for the Monday. So, this is this video is recording prior to my simulation week, which I'm going to talk about in a moment. But the reason why I'm behind schedule, there is a lot going on at home, guys. My uncle is unfortunately on palliative care now, so he's coming to the end of his life. Um, so, <clears throat> we've had to go and visit. I've been over, been over to my hometown, Nuneaton, to visit them in, in the hospital. Due to the course, I can't stay there, I wish I could, but I've had to come back and, and continue with university now, so he's currently in hospital at the moment. It's a very, very sad time for the family, and it seems to always happen around this month, sort of every year, really. I mean, my granddad passed away last year, bless him, my grandma the year before, and now my uncle is unfortunately on his, you know, going through this now so it's a very very sad time so that's kind of why i've kind of prioritized the family side of things a bit more now over the youtube i'm just kind of keeping up to date now and sort of retracking so i'm sorry that i didn't record a video going back into frontline placement i've kind of crammed it all in into this video really so this week we are in monday i'm in monday 9 15 till 10 15 and i'm doing um in short terms, drilling into someone's bone to get, get access. Um, I can never say I, 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 -O, I, -Z -I -O or something like that. I can't really uh, pronounce it. I'm terrible with them sort of stuff. Basically gaining access in, in, into the into the bone way. There is two ways that we can do this through the, um, the humerus. So if you think here, see what you do. You get the edge. So if you tell the, the patient to put their arm on their chest, and you have a feel here, you feel like a little hard spell, hard bone there, that's your humerus, top of your humerus, the head of the humerus. And then what you do, you look for the mid line down here, and then what you do with both hands, if obviously I can't do this on myself, you then go in with both thumbs, and it'll be equal, equally with both thumbs, and that's where you would then drill into the, to the head of the humerus. Also, you can go into the, into the fibula, the head of the fibula, um, I don't know whereabouts the landmarks are for this, so that'll be in the next video. I'll kind of explain a little bit more when I do know a bit more knowledge. I just know that from 
uh, we had a um, a conference, a paramedic society conference, when we sort of went over that and we kind of had had practice. It was really really good. So the simulation week then. So we in the morning we're going over over that, and then we have a fifteen minute break, and then we have half an hour of cannulation. Now. <clears throat> that's going to be good because and very very nerve-wracking because as you can imagine we're then going to be practicing this and then in a couple of weeks we're going to be signed off as competent so we're going to be doing this on the road for the very very first time it's kind of nerve-wracking we're then going over that we have in university we have the arms so we can cannulate obviously not on ourselves we have the the university providers with fake arms and they've got a pump in so what you do you'll you'll be pumping the arm and it's kind of like a dye and it's pumping the, the you know as acting like the blood supply so then when you do cannulate you do find the vein and you do the pull back you can then tell if you actually have gained it access or not basically it, 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 that should be really 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 good after this we're then having ALS um, practice so we go into the big sports hall and practice ALS so we're then split into little groups we have a scenario the lecturer will then say go and it's kind of an informal sort of not an assessment you'll then go over and start considering so obviously we've already done ILS before it's then the next step up so instead of you doing it you will then take the lead you are the lead clinician in the, in the situation you'll be then telling people can you go on the chest can you take over the airway sort of recognizing it are we in VT are we in VF is it asystole so you know and sort of taking the lead then considering drugs so are we going to give an adrenaline, one in ten thousand, um, and and sort of going from there? And uh, if you get what I mean, so that's that's why it's different to ILS. It's a bit more advanced. You're then looking at management and drugs. After, if you do, hopefully get a ROSC. The the care you do after that, so you know, sort of going down. Excuse me, sort of going down that pathway, and I think that's the next step up. And I think that should be really really good. We're going to be given scenarios, so it's going to be a massive massive learning curve. And I think I'm going to you know, really, really, obviously really enjoy that. So I have some pre-reading to do before we start today. I woke up really, really early for today, so I can do a bit more pre-reading. It's currently quarter past eight, so I've got a little bit of time now to do some reading. So I've got some pre-reading because the guidelines for, is it? The guidelines on ALS and the Research Council and stuff like that have changed. Um, I've done a little bit of pre-reading now and from what I know is so normally you'd obviously go in you check for danger you then go so you, you go down so you go over the CABC so catastrophic hemorrhage airway breathing circulation you then look in the airway check if there's no obvious, no obvious occlusion and stuff like that if there isn't you can tilt the head back and sort of you know you, you, you probably have been through this before McGill forceps prostate drainage and sort of clear the airway if there is anything normally then you would then put an adjunct in so an OPA um, NPA and stuff like that and fit that in place normally. The research guidelines have now changed. You don't do that. So you look in the airway, you you clear the airway if, if necessary. You then update and say, you know, this patient, you've already, you've already updated them, sorry. I said we need a second crew. You will then start a CPR. Defib's attached. Look at the rhythm. Are we in VT? Are we in VF? Is it shockable, non-shockable rhythm? If so, then deliver the shock then you go and do the airway so it's it's recognizing that shock of rhythm first early defibrillation would be key in you know in these sort of situations and i think the guidelines have changed massively for the better i think i think they're kind of being revamped now for in a better way if if that makes sense so that's all really for this I'm, I, I need to kind of go to, to do a bit more reading on this but an exciting day ahead I'm going to now probably after this lecture record a sort of reflection on the day sort of say how it's gone and give you guys an update from there after I've done my pre-reading and the day so really exciting day today if you have enjoyed this video make sure you do like and subscribe down below obviously if you haven't already follow me on social media as I've been through all this all this all the time if you haven't I do sort of questionnaires on there sometimes I shout out my videos and I get to answer questions on there more freely. Now, another thing I wanted to talk about quickly, that if you haven't checked out the video last time, you wouldn't have kind of got the gist of it or understand, 
instead of answering the same question to people sometimes and, and messaging them privately and then someone else asking the same question, you know, why do you want to become a paramedic and stuff like that, them questions. What do you carry, the placement, them sort of questions. I'm going to do a live stream maybe once every week, twice a week, sometimes maybe, no sorry, once a week sometimes, once every two weeks maybe, it depends on how busy I am in that in situation because we have an ALS exam coming up, we have an um, anatomy, physiology and pathophysiology exam coming up, so we have a lot coming up, so please bear with me during these times, I will sort of talk about more nearer the time and give you guys a bit of pre-warning, but I'm going to do like a live sort of stream maybe on this channel and answering these questions live for you guys so you kind of get the gist and, and know and ha and everyone can sort of, so say for example you didn't think of that question but someone else asked it and you actually think actually I was wondering that but I was scared to ask, everyone can sort of see the questions, so that's kind of the thing. So make sure you follow me on Instagram, it's student underscore paramedic underscore Kyle and I will catch you guys in my next reflection video of the day today. So thank you guys for watching, I'll catch you in the next one, goodbye.